24th. Presents are Edwin Miller, Nick Camposano, Patty Gale Staff, Jean Walker, Amy Fox, Karen McRae. Okay, um, this is public discussion. I think Michael Allen is on right now. Would you want to state your name and Michael question? Allard, representing the Massey Lake Association. <sighs> Any questions? <laughs> I noticed last <coughs> month um, there was a request for twenty five hundred dollars. Yep. For milfoil. Yep. For milfoil treatment. Treatment. That's correct. Um, and I, uh, New Masky Lake. Are you familiar with New Masky Lake Association? Mm -hmm. Sole purpose. Sole purpose. I is think for the record, we, he should tell us about this. Sure. So the association's sole purpose um, is to organize to um, have an uh, 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 an entity to apply for grants, get matching grants, um, uh, get quotes, mm -hmm. and treat the milfo in the lake. That's all we do. 100% of the money that we raise goes directly to treatment. Um, we have about, I think we represent about 300 individuals, maybe 150, 200 homes in the Namaski Lake area. Okay. I think everyone's familiar with the milfo issue yes. in the state and in the lake. Uh, five years ago, we had the worst infestation in the entire state in the Maskey Lake. It's a constant battle. We're realizing it's not something we're ever going to win, but it's something that we have to constantly fight to take care of. Uh, as far as who's going to fund it, that's a big question. <laughs> the association uh, um, has about 200 active members. We have a membership fee, uh, and we also ask the members for donations on a regular basis, but it's not enough to cover the treatment costs. So we've gone to the town on a number of occasions. Um, first time was, I guess, five years ago. Uh, I, actually, I think I was at this committee five years ago as well. We went to the town asking for money. They sent us here. This commission actually said, we think it's a good cause. We don't have any funds, however, but we will recommend that the town support you. We went back to the town. The selectmen actually denied the direct request but said, we'll take it to the, to the town for a vote, mm -hmm. which they did, and it had overwhelming support from the town. Um, in fact, that year, I think it was the only issue that had overwhelming support from the town. Um, last year was the second time we had some help from the town, and that was um, uh, spearheaded by somebody who was actually going to do diving mm -hmm. and picking up the milfoil fragments. And they got money from the town, and we kind of let that sort of be its own uh, uh, thing. We didn't, the association didn't get involved. So this year, we have another treatment that's required. We've actually done the treatment. It was done uh, a month ago. Uh, and we're behind in our, our finances, so we need some money. So we went to uh, the, the association members. We're in the process of collecting. Uh, we're going to uh, Annal North, Ameri uh, North America, who's the operator of the dam. We're going to the city of Manchester, and we're going back to the city of Gosstown. And we went to Gosstown. They said we actually allocated some money for treatment, but it was for diving. It's and th is that correct? That's correct. It's okay. for diving. Okay. Yes. Yes. And that then that, and that the commission was responsible for dishing it out. So. That's what brings us here. So, um, and I did speak to the diver, Larry, and I, um, and I have the proposal that was from the town because I also spoke to the town manager about all this. Um, and the concern he has at this moment is Glen Lake. Glen Lake needs the diving. Glen Lake has uh, a massive amount of milfoil near the boat ramp, and if it isn't taken care of, he said that it will, of course, affect downstream as well. Sure. And the proposal that was signed, um, it was a five-year proposal, I believe. Well, that's what was for. And I did speak to, um, like I said, the town administrator about this. And um, at, we talked at length about it, and we thought that we have $2,000 is what we have. That's all we have. Mm -hmm. And that... The money was proposed, for, the proposal was for diving, and he did write the proposal. And they didn't know where to put the $2,000, so they put it in our budget, and we really weren't aware. We knew there was $2,000 <coughs> in there, but nobody gave us the proposal. Um, Patty didn't know, I didn't know until we started bringing this forth last month. And they, they explained that they put it there because they had no other place in the budget sure. to put it. Sure. And so that's all we have right now is that okay. $2,000. Um, so what can we do to get some of that money? 
you know, we get towards the Masky Lake. You know, the town said it was actually for the Masky Lake and for Glen Lake. And also, so you understand, I mean, maybe you do understand the process, but uh, milfoil cannot be pulled by a diver unless it's directed by the state of New Hampshire. Correct. You can take your own and your own property, but another diver cannot do it unless it's actually proposed by the state of New Hampshire. Correct. So I don't, I'm not even sure what the status of Glen Lake is. I'm assuming that they have a long-term uh, management plan as well. I'm not, I, I don't know for sure. I can't, mm -hmm. I, don't, I can't speak for him. No, I, and I had invited him to come in tonight okay. to explain, explain this. Okay. And he uh, invited so him the diver or he? So Mr. Pila, the, Larry. Mr. Larry Pila, yeah. We, and, we, and we use the mic. Yeah. yeah. And apparently this is what he does. He is a diver that does milfoil. And he works with um, groups to also with volunteers mm -hmm. and other um, people. So... So, so, so you can only do what is directed by the state of New Hampshire. Correct. So Correct. We, we have a long-term milfoil, you know, management plan. Mm -hmm. um, the, the problem has been in the past, because we've been at this for five years, has been the cycle has been kind of off. Mm -hmm. The way it's always worked in the, in the past is you have to ap uh, apply for treatment mm -hmm. in the November, December, January time frame with the state. Mm -hmm. The state issues... Um, um, that permits to the applicators in the February March time frame, mm -hmm. which means that you're working with a map that's over a year old by the time you're out and actually doing the treatment. Yeah. This year, and actually that cycle also has been very detrimental to us to come to the town because we never have a number to come to the town, mm -hmm. with. not in time. It's always a year behind. So this was the first year the state actually said, you know, we're going to kind of put, uh, we're going to go out to the applicators and get quotes for up to a certain amount mm -hmm. of treatment. Mm -hmm. and then check what you actually have for a problem and then treat what you actually have. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and, that's what put the, and that's what put us in a position where we had no opportunity to go to the town or the commission and say we need funds because we had no idea what, what, number, what the number would have been. Right, and uh, I think at this point, because we have, the, we have another lake in need, I, I don't know what other people feel, um, well, it's a all the lakes are in need. Right, exactly. <laughs> I know that. But where Glen Lake is upstream, yes, Evelyn. Well, my thought also being Glen Lake has a large portion of its public that is for the Goffstown, all the Goffstown mm -hmm. residents. I think that's one mm -hmm. thing I'm thinking. And it is upstream, and they have milfoil, but not to the extent that is downstream. They have more. Who? The Glen one downstream Heath has more. No, Glen Lake has, has more. more. Have you seen? Have you seen? Have you seen a plan, or have you seen a survey that shows that? I just talked to him on the phone, and he, he did. To say, Larry? Yes, to Larry. Well, Larry's not. Larry's not. I like Larry. He works with us. He's not the state of New Hampshire. He's not Amy Smagula. Right. He's not DES. He's and Sue's been talking to Amy Smagula okay. yeah. about getting yes. a, a plan so for Glen Lake. If there's no plan for Glen Lake, then you can't even. Well, I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to speculate. New survey is what she's asked for. She's, she's asked for new surveys. For Glen Lake because okay. Glen Lake does have the boat ramp. I, I understand that. This takes organization. That's what the Masky Lake Association is all about. It takes this plan. We have the plan. Mm -hmm. We have the surveys. Um, without that, without those surveys, you can't go and pull milfoil without a permit. When talking to Larry, it sounded like he had a plan. He's no, pulling the I know he has his plan because he discussed that with me last year. And I sat down with Larry and said, Larry, I know you have your plan, but you have to go by Amy's plan. You have to go by DES's plan. So he never saw DES's plan for the Maskey Lake last year before he went and dove and treated, treated it. He was just going to go and start doing it. So Larry, you can't do that. You have to go by the plan that DES submits. Yes. So I was going to suggest that we Maybe. No, 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 get a copy because what we have in our packet here, this is the long-term plan for right. Namaskey Lake. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, Sue refers to a Glen Lake plan, plan, but she's using the same dates as this one, so I'm wondering if she thinks that this as, as what plan she is for Glen Lake, which it's not. It's just for Namaskey Lake. Right. When there are e emails back and forth she attached. She, so your previous she, meeting, did you not get one right. for Glen Lake? We haven't. I, I submitted the plan to Sue. Well. And that's for Namaski. That's, that's not correct. for. So I would say at, at a minimum, you'd want to see the. Do you have the proposal the for Glen Lake? Yeah, that was that's Glen Lake. That went out to the previous meeting. I didn't resend it. Okay, so there is one. Can I ask what that is? Is that, is that the long-term yeah, long management plan for Glen Lake? Okay. 
That was the one done last year. Last year. Okay. Well, that's, that's what was given. And then you would need a survey done during 2013 to show what milk oil needs to be treated during 2013. As it's not in the plan. The plan says we'll generate that every year. So long as an organization went and generated that and it requi it requires diving removal, mm -hmm. then like, then you're in compliance with the Okay. Well, I have I have you know, the plan for Namaski Lake, and I also have the survey for this year for Namaski Lake, and the plan from DES that shows we have to treat the lake, and that there's four spots that need diving removal later in the in, in the year, and 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 that's what you have to follow. If you don't have one of those for Glen Lake, then you, you're not following DES's long-term management plan. Then I, I don't know that you you may have that, by the way. I we, I think Sue was working on that and speaking <coughs> with her today, or yesterday, I should say. Um, she said that um, she was also going to be working, I think she said, with Larry to try to get, because one reason is Glen Lake is upstream. Yes, Karen. I, I'm hearing all that you're saying. Let's get Namaski Lake cleaned up. Let's, we're in the budget process. Let's get uh, an amount to put in our budget for next year for Glen Lake. If $1,000 is not going to do too much for Glen Lake this year. Well, speaking to Larry, he, he has a group that will help. Now, but when, when you're saying this right here in this, one Lake of the fi files says that um, March 2012 annual town meeting, $2,000 was appropriated for milk oil eradication at both Lake. Glen Lake and Namaski Lake. So to me, that's telling you that split you're it. expected to split it. Um, this petition article was submitted. You know, it goes okay. You say it's anyway. That would be the very best we could do for the Maskey Lake would be split it, right? I would think. I would think so too. And I, I know they plan on doing. But we don't have any more than two thousand dollars to start with. Um, I think we should budget then then either go to CIP or put it in our budget for uh, milfoil eradication and have it for a, an annual amount of money for both Glen Lake and Namaski Lake. They, they're working on, Namaski is working on treatments, yearly treatments, that most of theirs is already taken care of. So they are way ahead, no, I'm just, but you're doing treatments now, correct? <coughs> the treatment was that we had a treatment had done treatment last. It's our third treatment, and it was done you've had, last month. You've had treatments done. Yep. Glen Lake hasn't gotten to the stage to have treatments because the milk oil. No, nope, they've had treatments. She, I think that was a while ago, though, wasn't it? Before the. This is all in the past five years. Before the flood. No, it was after the flood. All the milk oil came from the flood. Came from the flood. Yeah, it came from the mother. It came to yeah. Glen Lake from the flood, and but from Glen Lake to Massachusetts. That's Lake why it's so important to take care of Glen Lake. We can't. It, I don't mean to interrupt. We're never going to solve the issue. Right. We're always going to have to fight the exactly. issue. Exactly. We thought early on that we might be able to solve it, no, but that's it's not solvable. No. We just have to be able to fight it. And if you look at, if you read through the very long, uh, long-term management plans, the goal, for example, at Namaski Lake is to get it to be less than ten, to be le the infestation to be less than ten percent of the entire lake. That's the goal. We don't think we'll ever get below that. But it, but it is an issue that's going to require money from, from the town on, our, on, a, on, on a regular basis. basis. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a and public access to Namaski Lake? In yes. Manchester. Yes. In Manchester. In Manchester. And there's an unofficial. It's unofficial, unofficial, unofficial in Manchester. Manchester. Two unofficial I ones in Gosta. It's, it's not, there is no, uh, no access to the lake. But our official access yeah. is actually the park that conservation. Right. Uh, that we put all, you know, we got all those grants, cleaned it all up, put, had a huge. But uh, in, Jolly unless Jolly you Jolly have seven, volunteers monitoring seven. every boat that comes know. in and comes out, you're going to have a constant uh, infestation right there. I mean, and that's not counting the birds that fly in. Right. But I mean, look at what they do up at Sunapee. They've got volunteers there watching every boat that comes in and goes out. Right. And they still and they have, hose them down and and they still have no fun. and they still have no fun. <laughs> Right. Yeah. There is. There is. The loom. I don't think we have to appropriate the money tonight anyway. Well, Dave well, says up to you. I asked if we heard David. anything. Well, let's think about the calendar here. I'm looking at these plans which have 
we're talking about activities that take place in August, September. It is the end of July. To say that we're not going to do anything till another meeting, now we're at the end of August, I mean, it, it would be pointless to delay and delay so that nothing can be accomplished. Especially wait until the water goes down. You know, wait, waiting for another plan to be drawn up, but there's a plan on the table, there's action to be taken, I think we should act on it, and the fact that the other plan hasn't gotten together yet, well, that's very, very unfortunate, but we could waste the summer Certainly. and not be able to accomplish the goals with holding funds, I think, you know. Oh, yes. I don't I don't mean to withhold yeah. funds. But I maybe divide them. But I don't know what they're gonna do in Glen Lake. They're See that's my problem. They're There's no they're, they're gonna do, but we don't know from anybody yeah, for I certain. Yeah, I know. I talked to him on but the phone. And yeah. But it's hearsay. That's not Yeah. I mean but it is I would like to but put money in the budget for that uh, we can for next year. year. You know, ten thousand dollars, whatever it calls for so that we have a pot of money to take care of this problem and to take care of treatment and what have you on a regular basis because it is a recurring problem. But this year, I think we should well give a dollar to Glen Lake. No, I, see, I, I'm and really. Then, <laughs> but I don't. We don't have a plan for Glen Lake. I, I know it's because I did the talking. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Um, so I. I I, I would suggest if 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 we split the money a thousand a thousand, right, and the thousand doesn't get used for this is a question I have, and so it doesn't get used this year. Can you save it for next year? And we use could it give again? it to you, but with the equipment no, no, doesn't get used, we could give it to you by probably October. No, I, I, you know what? Honestly, I don't think it's. Listen, we have this, my bill right now is uh, ninety five hundred dollars. Right. I have three thousand. I have like three thousand dollars in the bank uh -huh. right now. We're going to get money from. Uh, I'm sorry, we're getting thirty percent of the money from the state of New Hampshire. Thirty percent. Yeah, I have the, the actual Warren article said to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $2,000 annually for the purpose of eradicating and monitoring milfoil weed from Glen Lake and Nemapsi Lake. That's what I think. And I don't think splitting after, is unfair. After a five-year yeah, period, reevaluation of deed will be resubmitted. Now, as a special article, if the money is not used this year, it can it will be held over for a second yeah, year. Okay. You can use special article money for two years. So, so that's true. If, so if, if we didn't use that second half, for Glen Lake, you could apply it next year. Okay. And, and, and our organization, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go. And we're gonna fundraise. We're gonna do everything we can to raise more money for next year. I don't know if there's gonna be treatment next year or the year after. We actually expect it to be every other year. But we're gonna do everything we can to yeah, fill in the balance. I know you said you have 200 active members and there's an annual membership fee. How much is it? Ten dollars a person. Ten dollars per adult per year, and then we ask for additional donations as well. And for example. And it's not insignificant. Uh, if I can scroll this real quick, it's right here. I can give you, for example, current year, and we're about we're probably about halfway through quarters through. We've we've collected. We've actually we have our annual annual meeting is tomorrow. We actually collect a lot of dues at the annual meeting. Um, we've collected three hundred sixty dollars in dues and fifteen hundred and seventy dollars in donations so far this year. Last year we collected nine hundred and forty in membership dues and thirty eight twenty in contributions. So in addition to the membership fee, we actually the members contribute a lot more money as well. Okay, I, I had asked Sue on July 17th, I emailed her and I had asked, have we heard anything yet on the mill foil at Glen Lake? And the, what I got back from Sue, mm -hmm. the town administrator, was no request at this time. Before that, she had, the, I had the chain of email asking about um, uh, Glen Lake and what Amy said was I will need to do a new survey to determine current status then I will be able to provide a plan of action. That's exactly what I'm saying. So you use that survey every I'm year. just, I'm saying I'm. We should divide them. Well, I don't know if they, if you're going to ever have anything in time this year. I don't know what he said to you because I he, wasn't. He sounded like he, yes. And that um, was, he was going to have I have something. not talked to him. Yes. Well, because there is a large section on the lake that belongs to the town, it also could be that we would like to use the town, the Conservation Commission, use the model that he has constructed for this mill for eradication that the Conservation Commission should be submitting because, you know, what we're saying is we're yeah. waiting for residents to do it, but in fact, we have a very. What are you going to do if they don't? We did, but what are you going to do if the residents don't get together and organize? Because if there's no organization to do this, but there's I'm no way to the get. Conservation. Right. You guys will do it mm -hmm. on behalf of 
I like. Ju I'm just throwing this out, saying that there is a large park over there, and you're saying the milfoil is right in front of yeah. the boat ramp. The town yeah. ramp. Well, I mean, if it's at the town ramp, it's in the whole lake. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's right. It, uh, Glen Lake is a deeper lake than than right. Mass right. Lake, and and that protects a lot of Glen Lake. Not all of it, but a lot of Glen Lake. Can I just point out to because I know you're mentioning Larry's name. I don't know. I, is everything I say on the record? I like Larry. You're on TV. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I, so Larry, I like Larry. I worked with him last year. He doesn't understand the process. He's a diver and he's very good at what he does. He doesn't understand that he has to work by DES's instruction because he's not a landowner. The only people who have a right to go in and clean up your, your own property in front of your beach is the landowner. Anybody else that does it has to do it totally at the direction of New Hampshire DES. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I was working with him, he does not get that. He doesn't understand that. He does work to go and get money and raise money because he wants to dive and he wants to clean, and he's very good at it. But he doesn't get that he has to do it exactly the way they say to do it and exactly the locations he says to do it and only in the area that they say he can do it. Okay. I like Larry. <laughs> Just wanna, for the record. I don't know Larry. I talked to him, but... Um, His heart's in the right place. Yes. I just split might. it. Well, see, I think that's, David, I understand what you're saying. Let's use the money and just, you know. But on the other hand, I feel like the voters, we mm -hmm. had voted on this. It has been indicated that it should be split. Nick is saying to us. It doesn't it's actually say that. It, it says, says split. And it says for both. It says for both. both. So they say, say you could give split. one to Glen, one dollar to Glen Lake, give the rest of the, and then, but, you know, so the next year, and I think there I has to be a push to put together some kind of association, yeah. whether it comes out of conservation or the residents there, that we may then say, okay, the money we're appropriating is going to go just to Glen Lake and the dollar will go to uh, the mass. I mean, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's got well, to be. I, I, I don't want to ask for 100% of the funds. I don't think that's right. I don't, I don't want to take from mass. I don't right. want to take from Glen Lake either because they're fighting the same issue we are. And it's not, it's not. The Masky Lake at, at the Forsake. And that's what it's going to end up being. 50-50. 50-50, I think, is fair. And that, I think that's fine. I think that's fair. And I think next year, if we can get the town to do $10,000, 50-50, or for that matter, maybe leave it up to you guys to decide who needs it. I mean, you know, when they get their plan, if, if, if they have a, if our treatment next year is five grand and we can raise half that and get some money from the state and Glen Lake can do the same, mm -hmm. maybe it's a different split that, that this committee can decide who gets what. Uh, yeah, because last year they it's, it's they contracted with Larry to do it. The town did. The town did. Hmm? Oh, I have to state. Yeah. I don't know how this works, but yeah, just need you to state your name. Oh, Vicki Allard. Okay. And um, I just want to say that watching what our lake has gone through, the Maskey Lake, you know, the amount of work, the effort, the organization to put this organization together, I completely support something at the same level for Glen Lake. That's the only way we're going. We're, I mean, we could ever get to our ten percent goal is if Glen Lake is treated, but you can only do that if all of the boxes are checked off. Working with the state, I love the state, but <laughs> working with the state is not easy at this level. I mean, there's so much bureaucracy and nobody knows what one other person is doing. And so I totally encourage the Conservation Committee, if that's what you guys are interested in doing, in beginning a Glen Lake Association with the homeowners. But I think for all the effort that we've put in, the Maskey Lake shouldn't be penalized no. as a result. No, no, no. no. Because, I think you, because Glen Lake is a little behind the eight ball. Right. I mean, really, five years ago, you couldn't even swim in our lake without getting milfoil wrapped around your legs. It became a safety hazard. And how everybody has rallied together, you've got to give a nod of approval to, to the residents on this. Like, most of them can't even really afford the $10 a person dues, but they do it because they really love, and there's a real community on that and lake. Have, well, I don't know if anybody here saw it five years. You have no idea how bad this was five years ago. It was unbelievable. We had something like, a, I think it was a 75% infestation. You understand, this milfoil grows, it, it, yeah. like it's like a weed. It comes to the surface, it grows seven inches a day, comes to the surface, and then grows across the surface at seven inches a day until the entire surface is covered and you can't even, yeah. this is my wife. My kids four years ago were 13 and 14 years old. We'd be out water skiing. I'm not exaggerating. Every time they fell in the water, they got all the water with green stuff all over their shoulders, anywhere in the lake. That's how bad it was. And that's how bad it will be in Glen Lake if it's not treated too. It, well, it's that's, everywhere. That's kind of what this Larry is the truth. said to me. It's going to be so bad that yes. if they don't start doing something right now, 
they won't be able to use any of the waterfront. Yeah. And diving isn't enough. Diving is is, is is like is the way to get about two percent of it. You, you got to treat it. And you got to treat it. And then you got and what happens is, for example, this year, and I think the state's starting to do it better because now they're trying to say, raise, you know, uh, get a quote for so much, and then we'll come out just before we do the service and hit the areas that we need it. And where it's big, they have them do the herbicide treatment. Mm -hmm. And where there's just a couple of plants, they say, okay, this one, this one, and this one, we're going to send divers down to get that. And I have the map that shows the three spots that we have to send a diver in later on this year. Once, And we can't even do it until Amy comes back and says, here's where you stand, the treatment did this, now you can send the diver in. Now, I'm just, this is, I'm just asking a question. If you're uh, using a motor that then cuts through this stuff, sure. so then you're yep. dividing mm -hmm. it up into little mm -hmm. pieces, it spreads. That then spreading it's a it. weed. It spreads. So, so the Absolutely fact spreads. is that that is a, another yes. issue. So you may, for a while, or say you have to discontinue that kind of activity, so that you aren't spreading it. Uh, I but mean, even if you have robo, too. Yeah, it doesn't robo. matter. There's a big um, in Winnipesaukee this week. The coast in this kayaks and canoes. They want to set a world record um, to yeah, it's, and it's for, Did you see that? Yeah. Because the people need to wash off kayaks and canoes and leave them out five days in the sun. Yeah. yeah. So it's, this is a, you know what, this is a huge yeah, issue. It's, a it's actually a bigger issue for the state of New Hampshire than many other states. There's something about our acidic water that really lets this stuff grow and grow fast. And we're, and on, honestly, we're fortunate enough, if you, get, if you have the long-term milfoil plan, the state will continue to fund part of your treatment. If you haven't done this yet for a lake body, they're not even doing treatment plans anymore because they can't raise enough money to take care of all the bodies of water. And every boat owner pays a surcharge, surcharge. on their registration for so yeah. for yeah. milfoil. So it's, it's... Unfortunately, I am a milfoil expert, so if you guys have any questions <laughs> about this, I can answer it. Well, we may I'm also a Namaski Lake expert because I've been living on that river for 43 years. Yeah. So could I suggest going off of what David had said earlier is that whatever amount you decide to hold back for Glen Lake, you do that contingent on a plan, plan. being in place right. with the state mm -hmm. for use of those funds this year. This year. And if that's not in place, then consider taking those funds for Namaski Lake where they already have a plan. A plan. Well, and the good thing about this whole milfoil thing is it is dramatic, the difference from before the treatment to after. It's very expensive. A thousand dollars for Glen Lake, if it's throughout the lake, it's not going to do anything for you. He can pick up all that milfoil he wants. It's going to grow right back. But once you put the big money in, which is what we had to do five years ago, that now you're just keeping up with it. And you notice immediately the difference. You can see, you don't have this stuff all over your legs. It's, it's not all over you. So it is, it's a big, it's, you know, it's a big investment, but it works. So. Can I? Stand up and walk around. Can I show you some charts? Sure. Just look at what she's saying. Well, so what was your initial investment? You said five years ago. What was? And what was the first? Kind of simple. The first one was big. Forty thousand. In 2010, wow. the total first investment was forty-five thousand two sixteen. Mm -hmm. We collected uh, twenty-seven, uh, twenty-eight hundred dollars in donations from our members, eight ninety in membership fees. The town, twenty-three thousand. We got Enel North America to kick in five thousand dollars. In the state of New Hampshire to cover 13,536. Mm -hmm. So that what Ricky was just saying is true. This is the chart for our initial infestation. The second one is last year's treatment. You see, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot smaller, mm -hmm. and that's this year's treatment. I mean, we, it, we're, we're getting somewhere. It's getting better, but it's going to be a constant a constant. Battle. You can have these, or I can pass one. I, I only we have, have one. Copy. We already have them. You have the three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, how'd you guys get that? How much? How much email's great. Email, yeah, email <laughs> for the whole state. Uh, Yearly, you know. Uh, well, I know what. I know that. Uh, well, I, I, I haven't seen the the, the no, budget before. right away, but it's it, they expend all of those funds that they get in for milfoil, and it's a dedicated fund, and everybody wants to rate it. Yeah. And you've got people from, actually, it's Son of Pete, New London, who are really on their case that you can't do that, and like you I can't. said. They, no, the state can't raid, oh, raid, the money. Uh, raid the money for the uh, uh, milfoil. And the New London people are really heavily into this volunteerism. 
for making sure the boats are Flying washed off in and out. We have it's going so like that too. Same thing. Big the time. big lakes have just volunteers that just it's all the time. Yeah. Actually, I think yeah. at Newtown they've hired high school. Yeah. You know, so or college, that's, and, and that's it's actually their job for the it, summer. It's actually only, but that 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 that's method. We got to keep doing it, but that method is only effective to keep milk, milk oil out of a body of water. Right. Once it's there. There. Right. That's what I'm saying. And at this point in time, it's everywhere. So. But you can't stop the birds because nope. they bring it too. They, they do too. The birds, the fish, the boats, it's everything. Kayaks. And Kayaks. So, how well, many elk? Floods. Have <laughs> <laughs> That's how we got it. The Mother's Day flood. No, I'm, I'm comfortable with uh, what Nick is saying. Flood, uh, he said, Dave, did you want to well, and well, then well, more? That's did you say something else? Thing, whatever you do, I would. Uh, Karen, I think we have that it. side versus this side. <laughs> <laughs> Amy? Somebody has to make a motion. I don't think <laughs> I well, can. I mean, well, I wait. I think there's a little more discussion. Oh. I would tend towards putting all of it towards a plan that's already there and ready to go. Um, but I would go along with the idea of putting half of it there, holding the other half back to see if they get something going in Glen Lake, and if not, then sending it to Menominee. If that's the way the rest of the board wants to go. But Is that a motion? Give a time frame of how long you're going to wait for a plan and then release it? Well, I like mean, if they don't year. have a plan now, it's, it's kind of hard to understand how it, anything is going to happen this summer. Yeah. I think they do it later yeah. in the fall. They don't. They do it when the lake goes down. <laughs> is, there, is there a Glen if Lake? I, I, I think no that, one has a plan. But I, I think that's important <laughs> is that if, if the diver is going to go into Glen Lake, we, it has to be state, cha state, state sanctioned. State. There has to be a plan by the state that says this is where the diver is versus just the diver saying, I'm going in for $1,000 to pull. And, and how and, long and would that take? And Amy could come in and do a survey and say, go ahead and dive in this spot. She could mark that and do it like in a day or two. She could do that. Okay. She can't, she, there's no way they could do the, um, um, uh, the pesticide treatment. No, the I herbicide. Think I, that I, can't I, be done because that takes a whole this process. was near the boat ramp, yeah. was to try to start moving it away from the boat ramp. But now we're suggesting that that's done in the fall when it and yours is can be done, done any doesn't matter when it's diving, you can do it anytime. Glen Lake can be, or anytime. Okay. Okay. After the fall, yeah. I mean, have you heard from any of the residents? They must be seeing it by their docks and in front well, of It sounded boat. like they should be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I think that if it's by the boat ramp. I think they'll probably come to us when it's yeah, too late. I mean, what happened with us was it got to the point where I mean nobody could get it we, anymore, and so we had we, to unite. Yeah, you know, we actually we actually went out right when the, the first. I mean, when it was not even an issue in two thousand. Actually, it was in two thousand and seven. I took a sample and sent it to Amy, and she said that's what it was. But she had to wait to see what happens up in Glen Lake first. A year went by; it started to spread. Year. And then, oh, you know what? I do recall now. Actually, the state did the treatment in Glen Lake, and that was before they came up with their whole system on yeah. matching funds and everything else. The state did. The state did the treatment at Glen Lake first, and it was probably in 07 or 08. I think Don't quote 08 me. 08, maybe? That sounds about right. Because I think what I, I mean, Our first I was 2010. I've been trying to find all the information on Glen Lake as well. Th that sounds yeah. right. And I that, that's how they first started. And, and doing right the after, funds, uh, yeah, they, like the, the, the state was going to do it themselves, and right. then they stopped right away and said, no, we can't do this. We're going to go a different route. So I think yeah. that's how they got treated. And that was right after the floods or yeah. something. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, do we have anything? Yes. Another suggestion may be also to, to consider increasing that budget line yes. incrementally each year because obviously $2,000 is right. not going to be enough. Yes. Even if we double that. Okay. But if that's a special article, that's, that's, that's for set. five years, that's set. That's why I said we should put it in our budget, either a capital improvement mm -hmm. uh, amount or uh, in the budget for an amount for yeah. milk oil. And if it doesn't get expended in that particular year, it goes back to the general fund. But the $2,000 is wa walled off. To, 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 be honest, to give you some idea, I mean, because we're, we're, th we're three treatments into this and five years into mm -hmm. this. Um, on an ongoing basis, we're probably looking at, I, I could be wrong, but we're probably looking at five to $8,000 every other year for the Maskey Lake. Just for management. For that's management, that's, that's right. That's correct. So if we and, and, put and, five thousand a year in, it, it once they get Glen Lake to management, 
If we had 5,000 a year, and we could do every other year. I, I'm, that's the amount I, I'm thinking. And of course, we're going we're gonna to get a couple thousand from our members. We're going to get you know, 20, 30 percent from the state of New Hampshire. It's got to be an association, yeah. something right. like GHG, because yeah. they've got to take Well, the state needs somebody to, they need an organization. It could be you guys. I think I came to you guys five years ago, and you're like, no, we're not going to do it. And I, I don't blame you. <laughs> well, there, we didn't have a, any budget <laughs> at all. Understood. Okay, no. understood. See, this, this but they need somebody after to, send the, to, 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 um, um, to award the grants to. This 2000 just kind of came into our lap, mm -hmm. should I say. It was taken care of by the administration yeah, office of, up until this last month. <laughs> so that's when it kind of showed up and started. And again, the reason I'm here, it's because of the timing. Like and we, we got our thing in, 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 in yeah. uh, May or in yeah. June it was. We said, okay, here's the amount. And I went to the town. They said, well, we already got the money. We gave it to the commission. So, okay. so like you said, somebody can come in in, in a couple of days and tell them that it's okay. possible. It's possible. Okay. From a diving standpoint, yeah. From an herbicide, not a chance. It takes a, it's a whole year cycle. Well, and you might, guys might find, because it hasn't been maintained, that Glen Lake needs to start from scratch. Well, so you, I you think that they, they are a much deeper that. lake, and they're much more protected from milfoil than the Maskey Lake is. Where our average depth, you know, is five and a half feet. I know, yeah. Wow. We're a shallow lake, and we're 200 acres, that's why which is about the same size. That's, that's, why, the that's why it's so bad. Because yeah. it's warm, yeah. warm water. Yeah, actually, we got a lot shallower after the, the um, flood as well. Hmm. He said it was a very wide, wide, wide strip from the boat ramp up. So the, the tr I mean, so for all you know, and I, I, again, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not representing Glen Lake, but Amy might come in and say it's too big to die for. Mm -hmm. It has to be treated with herbicide, and we're going to have to get him on a cycle for next year. That could happen. That could happen too. Absolutely. Okay. That's why you have to go by what the New Hampshire DES tells you to do once they look at what the infestation is. But that's why also it's an invest it's an investment long term. You know, we put that whatever that number was, forty three thousand dollars in five years ago. Now again and we maintain it. Right. Okay. That's good. So <laughs> I move that we divide the money a la um, oh, David's, remark. David's remark that uh, we give, uh, we allocate $1,000 to the Ma Namaski uh, Lake Association for Eradication of Milfoil um, right now. We retain a thousand dollars for the purpose of using it at Glen Lake. If, in fact, the money is not used by or contracted by October 15th, the second thousand goes to the Namaski Association. Is that too late in the season to do anything? No, but he's already done it. He's, yes. he's looking money to pay the bill. And and if it, there's the drawdown and they can do something during the drawdown, because usually that's when it is, somewhere mm -hmm. in October. I mean, I, we can change the October 15th date. That was arbitrary, but this I just... October 30th, something like that. The Milford strand that we have, the drawdowns don't matter. It's, it's actually, it, it, it freezes and gets into a, a state that it doesn't... It doesn't but help at all. No, but I'm just saying if there's less water in there, it might Understood. be easier to harvest it then. Understood. Mm -hmm. Or treat it or, or whatever. That, that was my thought on that. Yeah. I would second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Now I'd like... Oh, yes, go ahead, Evelyn. Well, after the... I think we ought to also, s uh, how many residents are on Glen Lake, and maybe we should send a letter to them saying that this is a problem and, and that they're an association, and that we might want to have a subcommittee that would meet with the residents to see if we couldn't get an association put together. And I think that the Conservation Commission does have some responsibility because that is. I think so we too. are one of those residents. Uh, like so you have my, you guys have my contact information. I'm happy to sit down at the first meeting and talk about what we've done. And, and help if us. we could I get an association started, somebody could head it, and then we could back off. I mean, I really, I, I would appreciate it. I think we all would if, if yes, if we could use you also. Happy to help. 
I think we're going to have to do well, it. The reason if you don't do Glen Lake, you, you might as well put right. it downstream. That is just. Maybe you should, should have one association that does all the lakes as far as this goes. And again, start with these people who are in violation. Yeah, there's quite a few of those down your way. <laughs> We've tried to keep ours simple too. They, and when people first came to the association, they were afraid. What are you guys going to do? I'm like, all we're going to do is fight the milkworm. That's it. Nothing yeah. else. Yeah. We don't do anything else. Right. Every maybe. penny we get and, goes and to the milkworm. Actually, we should put a fine on these people. By <laughs> any chance, were these, well, are, we, are we taking our vote, right? Yes. Yeah, take a vote. It, yes. All in favor. All in favor. All in favor. Yeah. It looks as though um, a lot of this is kind of prepared by the state, and then you're filling in information for Namaski Lake. And you probably had somebody come in that did a survey of it, but I mean, a lot of this could actually, when they're but describing what the milfoil problem is and how to. The long-term milfoil plan is put together by Amy at the state of New Hampshire. We didn't by put that state. plan together. There you go. Okay. She, she, she came and asked us a lot of questions and a lot of information. We gave her a lot of information, but that plan was put together by her, not by us. Okay. But they will. But the state will no longer give matching funds to any any to body of water that does not have. A long-term milfoil plan well, put together. Okay. Okay. So it, Glen Lake needs a long-term. Yeah. I'm, uh, you could fund it yourself, but the state won't give you funds unless you have right. this plan. Oh, that's, no. I think and all we get from the state now is I think it's down to thirty percent this year. Okay. It was like fifty to start with, and they won't. You know, okay. like you said, there's not enough money, and they're spreading it out more. And well, okay. And at least the committee can ask to upgrade our budget. Because you're saying we get two thousand every year for five years from, from this, from from and add the, the other three thousand proposed to the budget mm -hmm. committee this year. You do have who operates who no, operates no. the dam? The does that generate electricity? Yeah, the, the yeah, Glen Lake it's Dam. It's who who operates that? It's that gentleman. It's an electric company, right? We got, we got five thousand from Enel North America the first year. We got five hundred dollars from them two years ago, and we're actually trying to get some funds from them this year too. They have an interest in keeping this lake clean. Yeah, that's a private thing. Okay. I wouldn't. I'm not sure. Dilute the two thousand dollars no. from the um, special article. I would put five thousand dollars in our budget if actually I'd put more in, but five thousand um, the five thousand if that's what it costs right now to maintain Namaski, perhaps if we keep a five thousand dollar amount in the budget for Milfoil will have a little bit of a cushion. If they come back next year, we can give you $1,000, but then we'll have $6,000 to really Lake. treat Glen Lake. Mm -hmm. Then the following year, we'll still have that 2000 and if we don't get the 5000 in the budget, we still have okay. that walled off as a... That, that's what this fight takes, for sure, is having like ongoing funds like that. And the other thing I'll say, too, is, you know, thank our, our town the, the, the two or three times that this that we've gone to the town and asked for for funds for this, it's support. overwhelming yeah. and these have been times where nothing else gets support and it, this comes up and people go yes no problem we want to help and it, 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 who doesn't want to keep our lakes and parks yeah. clean yeah. It, it, it's so again we passed this yes right so what we need now for Glen Lake, is I really do yeah. think, and, and right. maybe we should even, uh, you know, uh, be more aggressive and yeah. just say Conservation Commission is calling yeah. a meeting, you know, at a particular date. Uh, and I'm residents. sorry to s of the Glen Lake residents, and we can say ask that. Uh, I'm happy to be there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I think. August, you know, I think the summertime you're not going to get a lot of response. No, but maybe not. you're not going to get uh, until maybe September. the first week in September or something. But can we also just contact um, the Amy, the yeah. Amy from DES, oh, yeah. and then yeah. already has uh, something in place? I think we should start talking with her uh, again because we are a major player in this whole thing. I guess um, that's why I was so shocked when I I had his name because it, Sue gave it to me. Oh, you gave it to me from Sue or whatever? And that was the name I had when I called Larry. And when I heard how bad it was, I thought, where have we been? <laughs> mm -hmm. This is the lake that we should be taking care of. Where have we been? You know, all it takes is someone to take control. Michael decided to take control. Our first meeting five years ago was our, we had, it, it was raining, so it was in our house. I'm standing here lonely. I mean, there, there were so many people. We still get a, the checks and the support. Not everybody comes to the meetings now because once it's not an imminent issue, you know, obviously people kind of 
back off, but they still they're have still the money. Supporting it. Then they got the same thing. Yeah, you're, not gonna, you're, not, you're not going to be educating them that they have no pearls. Right. They know. So <laughs> they they know. probably don't know how. I don't, you know, it's a big lake. I don't know what their community is like. Everybody knows each other on the master mm-hmm. lake. And so mm-hmm. when we realized this was a problem, everybody kind of came together. They'll do the same thing because nobody wants this in front of their dock. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's awful. It's really, a, it, it mm-hmm. takes away from, I mean, the whole reason you live on the river is to use the money, is to use the water. And so if you can't use that. It's really as you say there were sections that weren't quite going to be usable. Yeah. Well, I got up, up so the boat ramp up. So um, somebody got to contact Amy, right? Amy, um, I said do is Magura. Hmm. Magura. All right. Should <coughs> we have a little committee that will put together a letter, or do we want at Patty to put together something, mm-hmm. and then send it out to the residents? Can we come up with a date and contact? Is that something Patty can do? Contact uh, Amy Magula? No, Smagula. Smagula. M. Okay. She's been talking to Amy, right? You no, Sue has. Sue, I mean Sue has not. She's that Sue was. I just have. I have her email. She may have. But I can talk to her. So Sue's send a letter to all the residents. You want to try and set the meeting or beginning of September. Mm-hmm. I think we mm-hmm. should. That's we have a day. Uh, yeah. Or maybe at one of our regular meetings. It might be. Oh, at that the would end be of good August. Idea. Have you her come to educate us. Oh, okay. About the whole process oh, all and, right. And then also let all the residents know. So I they think that's an excellent idea. All right, she will so definitely yeah. do that. She came five years ago I and sat in front of the board. She's in the state of New Hampshire is lucky to have her, by the way. Do she's you think the meeting in very good. the next meeting in August? Do we need the end of the August or because if we're waiting till the end of September, then let's do August. I think the August. August. So yeah. we'll, that'll be asking the state to By come. By then they don't know they have it wrapped and in August. At the same time, are we wanting to get a letter out to the residents and just say? She will be making a presentation, and we will be putting together, uh, you know. We uh, better find out if she's available. Well, that's true. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will check. Okay. And, may, and then we may just have to change maybe our meeting we date. We can do that. Oh, okay. We could, yeah. I'll mm-hmm. just I'll pull you guys all by email. Yeah. All right. Actually, my thought, well, but then if we were going to change it, because she couldn't make it, and then see what she's available, I would well, say just suggest close to earlier September. in September rather than yeah. late. Well, yeah, if that's well, September gets gets hairy, really, with school starting and everybody's home. But then we're getting late in September with that because the first part of September is got all kinds of if stuff. If she can't happening. make it in August, grab the week right after after that, or not Labor Day week, but close to it. That's, that's the week same. after. Yeah. Well, that's the second the week one. in September. Last so last that's last year, the funding request to have the state do matching funds was December. The deadline was December first. December. Oh, okay. December first. December first. Okay. That's what it we was could last do year. by the middle of September. See if we can put <coughs> something together in terms of not just the plan, but at least see if we can get the people in Glen Lake involved. Uh, see if we can't get Amy down here to do a presentation for us and invite. I would say invite the people from yeah. Glen Lake. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. The association yeah. and, and then maybe they will. They'll do it. Well, that'd be great. You know. And I, I have a feeling that Mike Allard yes. would be very helpful in helping them put this association well, it's to everybody's together. benefit. <laughs> we don't want to send them. No and we there. certainly have to have a strong representative on that commission. You know, if we put together, if something's put together, association. Mm-hmm. So, and to be honest, it may be very beneficial if we can get one going in Glen Lake to then combine the two of them. Uh, absolutely. And. Um, <coughs> Because it is all one system. It, it yeah. So yes, it might be for and for our work. town. Yeah. But yeah. That's what I, I was going to say for the town. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. whatever. Okay. Well, okay. Thank you for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. We kept you here a long time. Yeah. Thank you so much. I have one last question. Checks yeah. in the mail. What? Mm-hmm. Uh, we call. Who do I call? Call me because I'll I'll give a, I'll let Don know and he can make, cut cut the check. Sorry. To the, the Maskey Lake Association. <coughs> Okay. Anybody wants to come to our annual meeting tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Make where, a donation. You where is it? You can, it's at, uh, at our house. <laughs> you can make donations online at masterlakesassociation.com. <laughs> we have PayPal now. Just click and make a donation. Thank you. Throwing that out there. Thank you again. He is really sharp. We got to have him check on the, the overall committee. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. That was longer than <clears throat> I expected. Um, Steve and Denise Langley. Requesting a change in the conservation easement along Map 5, Lot 56, 
56-1 and 56-5, Pedro Drive, Mass Road. Where do you want them? Want them here? <coughs> up here? Up there? What do you get for you to see? Can everybody see? Mm -hmm. Right there? The only thing is they can't, does television matter? Um, <coughs> never mind. Well, actually, they can they move the camera, the camera around. Yeah. Okay. Check. That's fine. Yeah, because they can move the camera. All right. So I'm Steve Langley. We're here because we're proposing to develop a lot on Pedro Drive. We own uh, several lots on Pedro Drive. We developed a cell tower site and a medical office building over there. And we now like to develop a single story office building at the end of Petro Drive. And there is a conservation easement that is on this property. And we haven't been able to find a lot of information about this. And we're assuming because of the longevity of this board that you people may remember this. Um, but our, we would like to have a drive that goes through this because it's the only real way to access this site. If you're familiar with the end of Petro Drive, this is uh, very vertical here. It's a, it's a ledge that's about 18 or 20 feet high. Is that the one where they blasted the, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, to the get end, that the drive the in, they blasted, right. yeah, without a permit. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's oh. before us, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's very wet there, there's too. No dry, there's no drive blasted up through there. I don't, I don't know what that is. Yeah. There's Evelyn, we blocked road. that, right? Yeah. yeah. It's really wet in the glue. Yeah. 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 There's a wet, there's a wet right here. Mm -hmm. and, we, and it kind of runs we down. We don't have any intentions on impacting this wet. Actually, that was that and gorgeous pool yeah. up at the top there. And then they so have flat that's a That's a there's conservation a easement. Yeah, there's a pool. There was a pool. Mm -hmm. There's a pool yeah. there. Not down here by the road. No, 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 but what it, it's that like? sharp, sharp ledge that they had blasted oh, away, and then there's a, a pool when we went up there. There's quite a ravine up through here, which is Almost quite on nice. on the other side. Mm -hmm. Up through here, there's a, kind of a straggly little wet area, but I don't know of anything of any... Alberto pool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something. It was a pool. Right. And I think it's... Okay, so this area right here, this is this is certainly not a vernal pool. This is very, very uh, marginally wet, and you can see that it looks like it was created from bad forestry work because you can see tracks through it. Um, but we looked for any language that went along with this conservation easement. We weren't able to find anything on it. I don't think there's anything. So we there's don't nothing on the deed about it. No, there's nothing in any of the uh, Ooh, research. It's been recorded yeah. as part of this plan. Yeah. There's a there's this and there's this also. That's there's this easement. very narrow area by the road that was put into a conservation easement, which I we can't find any more than just the fact that it's been recorded as part of this plan. What what map lot are we talking about? Uh, this is lot 556, and then there's lot 556 one. Would be the other. So that one. would Actually be the five conservation five easement that's one. sitting in our packets that we've all received. Yeah. The actual conservation easement is in copy is in my that's hand. That's the e that's this easement. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. There's an easement. So it's a recorded document. Is it, yeah? County recorded LP document, LP. just like yep. any okay, so I guess transaction. We would just like yeah. to okay. understand it because we, we weren't able to find out. Okay. How does it happen to show up commercially? I don't know where, where you people got it. We'll never put our packet together. I put it in the packet. Company. You got it up? So any uh, conservation yeah, easements are recorded. always recorded so just like high. when you purchase a property, mm -hmm. the title and right. deed and the easements. Yeah, I read it to you on the phone. Mm -hmm. The language on the, I didn't think we could find anything with the language on the conservation no, I easement. I must have misunderstood that. Because I didn't think the language. I just caught, when you said you want to come in, I just copied everything okay. and gave it to him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I copied it. It's on part of the plan, too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, there is a note on the yeah, we're not we're not debating we're not disputing the fact that, that it's there. there. Yeah. We just don't know anything about it. You don't understand why it's there, I right. guess, is and what well, the intent because was. Because it was also put through the frontage, the access to one of the other lots, which made it difficult to understand as well. Well, we need to know what that means. It was, it was done as a condition of the approval of the subdivision. That, the that was obvious to me. It right. was done as a condition of, a, of an approval. Right. Um, right. We just... We didn't. We don't. We don't know what it's for, and we don't know what the value of it is to you people, and if you're willing to look at negotiating this. Well, how would we negotiate this if this is an easement that's a conservation that's easement, conservation that easement that 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 that's already there? It's you can change the to be maintained in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's the whole point of the conservation easement. Right. This easement shall be maintained in perpetuity in an undeveloped and natural condition without there being conducted thereon any industrial or commercial activities except as described below, and so it goes. So there's no latitude there, it can't be, there's can't nothing be that can be done no. with it, it can't be changed? No. No. I mean, that's, that's Even though that it takes, was it that wipes out the whole frontage on a lot? Well, when the subdivision was created, all this was considered and was decided what would be and available and, not, and what would that, be. See, this is what we go through a lot. If this is what was decided when it was created, we went through this extensively, and then when it goes to the next person, they want to change it. They want any, they want us to take it away, or they want. <coughs> we go through that with homeowners all the time. I actually have to say, take it back. Uh, it, it's a lovely looking circular Keiko Drive there, but that in fact was not supposed to be blasted away and that drive would not really be there. That was... You mean the road wouldn't be there? Keiko Drive? Well, wait up. That whole section that was blasted away, I think Which it allowed... This? Yeah. Well, to, to the left there. <laughs> that a blasted... That was not supposed to be in the plan. They weren't, they weren't given permission to do that. And the conservation easement was behind that, right? Well, there was an original exactly. in the land plan. There's an original well, there's Keiko a, this Drive, is, this and then is it got called changed. A resubdivision. I know. This I this was um, originally designed to be over here somewhere, and then this was prior to us. Then it was resubdivided, and they moved this cul-de-sac to here. And this is the way it's constructed, obviously, because this plan is based on current information so I guess I, I just I don't quite understand what you're saying was blasted and wasn't supposed to be blasted. The road was supposed to end right that way? Mm -hmm. The road was supposed to end and not have a cul-de-sac? Not so far up. All I remember is that uh, we that they were not given permission to blast out that area because it was in conservation <coughs> and, and there it was. That was that's Oh, that so that would be here. Mm -hmm. Right, that's this what piece. I'm saying. Yeah. Uh -huh. This piece right this piece here. Yes. Because, yeah, this does have some... Correct. Yeah, that was they were so you're saying that this easement was over here? Well, I don't remember. Not quite that far, but... But, but it was... Yeah. They were into the easement. They had blasted away, and they weren't supposed to do that. So I haven't okay. seen any plans since then. Um, what's lot 556-1? That, that 556-1 uh, is the lot that is on the corner of 114 and <coughs> Drive. Okay, and then 556-5 is this lot, which gets its frontage right through your conservation easement. And that steep I mean, mm -hmm. you're talking about this frontage and that very steep where they blasted. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably not as steep here as it is uh, here. This this goes from zero, say, up continuously. Mm -hmm. Probably probably grades up about 16 or 18 feet as you get to the center <coughs> of the cul-de-sac. That cul-de-sac was supposed to be further over. Well, there was an original subdivision. In fact, right. there it is. See it? Yeah, right there. That right was there. the original subdivision. Yeah. And then, and then <coughs> this is all prior to our ownership. 
It was re-subdivided, and it was constructed as you see it today. Right. So I, I have no idea so why they did this or how it ever got to this point. So it should be further over. So the original 556 was split into 556 and 556.5, is that what you're... I'm looking at well, an older plot here which just shows one big... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gave you the original. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, we don't so that's, that's that. not the current no. subdivision plan. This is the current subdivision plan. And this is actually prior to our subdivision that we have subdivided off the medical site over here, which is resubdivided again. But that's irrelevant to uh, what's mm -hmm. going on yeah. over here. Did you give me the ones? <coughs> so I, I gave you the ones that I saw. I guess I'm not sure how this evolved into two lots. That's prior to us. I was just a little bit confused as to how it evolved that you have a conservation easement and you have the frontage of this lot fronting through the easement. Somebody probably did it and they went to this one. It should have been went through it went through planning so went through everybody no, it should have been curtain to off it, right? The, it should have been off the front. Off off there's, the rail trail. There's no there's no frontage on this lot to any place but here. This is not there there's a piece of property between here and one fourteen. It belongs to the old farm across the street. Oh, Perkusky. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We used to have a they garden. They own, own this, where they had a garden and so on at one time. Yes. They own the property <coughs> on the <coughs> other side. Mm -hmm. So this lot does not front on 114. There's no curb cut allowed. And there wouldn't be anyway. It's right. Not, right. It's yeah. not their lot. Right. It's not, it's not, this piece is not fronted on there. So however it evolved to this through here is something that was done by the town, by planning and Mm -hmm. By the board, I can't. I mean, yeah. all land use boards <coughs> obviously had a look at this. And and looking at it and walking at on it, I guess we question the value. Right, of conservation. The, of, right, why that is? There's a lot of land, and it's it's just does. We kind of scratch our heads and why that particular piece of property was put in conservation. Well, and I don't know if it was something that was uh, set up sometimes um, conservation easements are established because it's in the development they're saying, okay, you're mm -hmm. going to do this, so we're going to ask for an easement yeah. over here. Other Might times they, gave us. Uh, they may have said, mm, this isn't a piece of property that we want, that we really need, but we want to maintain some natural state rather than to have development there. I mean, I think people have all kinds of reasons the why they want to have. That's why we're here, because First we don't know. We, we, have 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 we have subdivision have regulations. We have open it's space subdivision it's regulations it's when a large but parcel is divided and a certain to fraction to of that goes into conservation. Yeah. And, and you can say... Towns are becoming one monolithic spread of mm -hmm. the Which, and we... What is it, 60-something acres? Well, there's 80. There's 80 acres here. That's why. Why pick this spot that... Is well, the frontage for a lot. When well, there was all well, this available land, I mean, there's there's a lot of land back here. It goes. So we're talking about your conservation easement is here. That this is fine. all one parcel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So yeah. why why this is all? Well, there was we slope. Understand. There was wet. <coughs> and I remember walking that and dickering over this and everything. And it says here. Uh, 556.5, that lot has an easement to be determined later. And at one point, there was going to be an easement over that front lot, avoiding the wet. You're talking about the lot behind Perkusky? There was supposed to be mm -hmm. an easement from the lot off of Tetro Drive. Another one. Another one. There was supposed to be an easement from from here to here. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But it's yet it's to be determined at a later date. date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's right here in the approval decision. Lot <coughs> mm -hmm. five fifty six one. A deed restriction and restriction on the plan will note that lot five fifty six dash one provides a fifty foot access easement to be determined at a later date to lot five dash fifty six five approved by the planning board. 
So that that would have obviously this is not a logical place to build a driveway because of the slopes anyways. But I didn't create the subdivision. I don't the, the town created a subdivision that <coughs> just hard for me to understand. It shows that on this plan the proposed fifty foot wide access easement. Mm -hmm. Right. Goes parallel with the rails of trail, which is right. a which is a Next. logical way to develop that lot, <coughs> which is likely how we would develop that lot. But the, you know, these were all questions that we were trying to figure out as to why, why this, and you know, it makes this. Well, I think part of what Kate also has been thinking develop. about. Uh, to we be said that I right remember. away. I remember that. But I also do remember you know, a lot of this was at the time rails to trail and because they were putting the gas station and everything up front, they were talking about bringing an easement around the backside so that you could have a continuous rails to trail biking path that would then connect up. You remember from that's one side to the other? That's an easement that's on the shell site. Mm -hmm. There is an easement and it goes right through the deepest wet gully. Mm -hmm. You couldn't build a rail trail there for anything. Mm -hmm. Now there was a different access that at one time there was what they called an emergency access road that was asked right. for by the fire department. The fire. Mm -hmm. And it had something mm -hmm. to do with because of the fact that this is a gas station right. if they could so they could service it. And then mm -hmm. this was never constructed and then this was back mm -hmm. when Steve Griffin was the planner. He said that um, he, the town didn't see any value in it, and it was extinguished when we did the medical site. Remember that one, too? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you guys look at the original approval in 2002, 10 and 11? Uh, is the conservation easement where it states in the notice of approval? The conservation easement will be granted to the satisfaction of both planning board and conservation commission. To preserve the natural vegetation and trees along Mass Road and west of Cajun Drive. I was going to say, remember um, mm -hmm. when that gas station was built, it was supposed to leave the trees in front of it so it wouldn't oh, stand out? I, see I know. <laughs> I know I'm talking trees. But it was also be a, supposed to be a country store. It was also supposed to be a country store. So oh, yeah, that and that was all taken down. So I think that parcel, you're right. And that says the conservation easement will be granted to the town along the wetland and wetland conservation district surrounding the stream channel, which extends 150 feet back into lot 556-1 and lot 556-5. That would be this? So is that, mm -hmm. so is that covering it? No. Well, you so up to or a is it in the right spot? Close to here. And this is back when David was here. So the conservation easement, can you run your finger where the conservation easement is? There, there. Oh, I see why it's mm -hmm. there. It's a kit, yeah. Okay. Because you see why it's there because? No, because it's just one big, I think, it's and that was very steep. Slope and and, slope, and, and the slope, trying yeah. to preserve that wetland yeah, area. Yeah, it was super wet, mm -hmm. yeah. It was a stream or was, we, mm -hmm. we were walking in water, right, Cameron? I, I, yep. I find it funny that, that you found such value in this when over here it's so much nicer. Well, we don't. There's a beautiful well, ravine over here. Well, because we yeah, make recommendations, we but the planning board makes the final decision. We don't, we don't always okay. get what we want. We don't pick the exact spot. But I think also you have to understand that <laughs> ledge that has been blasted out when we walked it was not there blasted out. Right. So, you know, we're it looking. It changed. I mean, I mean yeah, when they came in, we were very what surprised you to walk see there right another here time. Is, is uh, very marginally wet. Like I say, you mm -hmm. can see like skitter trails and so on. There look, there's a lot of that kind of wetland on this parcel that looks like it was created by bad forestry management. Doesn't matter, it's there now. Oh yeah, we I understand that. Yeah. But I But is there more value to having an easement on the other side now? No, I don't think so because that we don't change an easement, do we David? You We always change an easement. I know. Well, I mean, and we're well, willing to offer a larger piece. Right. We would there'd be 20 times the size of this to, to uh, more it valuable so that, natural so that we can develop, develop what you know, is space. developable. We have like I say we have 80 acres of property here. And if you know there's a there's a lot of land up here that you know upland habitat you might call it that could be offered in place of 
this little half acre piece and we still wouldn't we're not asking to disturb this wet area we can we can do the work we can create the development in this site and not disturb that wet but we cannot access either of these two lots logically without going through that area why so that precludes any more development in this that. area. So well. Why don't you show them what you want to do so that they have a better vision on what we're trying to do. What do you mean what I want to do? What we're trying to build, what yeah. we're trying to so get to. Yeah, this, 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 this whole yeah. story is kind of evolving in my mind as we go on here. I didn't realize that our, the easement was this little piece down there with all the upland unprotected. And right, there's, this is, this is, a, <laughs> is, um, is 16,000 square feet. It's less than a half an acre. I mean, it's been resubdivided since then. So if it's not, you know, if it makes sense to have an easement it, that's beneficial more for conservation purposes in that right. area, and that that's really now not because of whatever they did, you might want to look at. I think the problem is, is that yeah. what was given as an easement was pre-blasting. I mean, it was really a disturbed, you know, dramatically disturbed after the fact. Of what originally had been meant to be preserved. So, so you're going to show us. I'm certainly open to understanding. Yeah. That. So it looks to yeah. me, it looks to me like based on what you're telling me, when you first agreed to this or that delineated the this piece, was over. this cul-de-sac was over here. So the road continued right past this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then all of this was taken out mm -hmm. to this point. Right. Right. But why? Which is now, you know well delineated on this plan but we didn't we didn't understand I knew that was there I would not dispute right. the fact that I didn't know it was there when we bought the property but I and I never you know gave it much thought until we got to this point now where we'd, we'd like to develop this lot because when you look at the way they subdivided this <coughs> you have the frontage on that cul-de-sac in a very difficult place to come through Anyway, mm -hmm. why don't you show us what you're that. proposing? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Or, or at least well, have your we're conceptual idea. No, I think what we're building. What oh, we're you building. Mean, well, that's what this plan represents. In the picture. Then this where? is a concept of what we want to build. We want to build a single-story office building. This is what it looks like from Petro Drive. This is set up on this ledge. So this elevation right here is about 16 or 18 feet above Petro Drive. So it'll have a nice appearance all the way from 114. It's a, as you can see, it's a um, very traditional style building. It's not a large building. It's for our construction company office. We're commercial and industrial building contractors and we need an office, a business office. And that's what we're proposing to build. Where's the ourselves. Uh, medical center? The medical office building would be here. If you continue yeah. through Tatro, it's it's here. All right. Any other buildings? Now, is that showing a detention pond behind your? That's what we're showing here. Garage <coughs> or your uh, parking area. This so you're is a parking, parking area. There's no garage. There's no equipment. No, this is strictly a professional office that we're building. So you have a, a parking lot, a building, a parking lot, and a detention pond. Yep. We don't think we need this detention pond. This was shown originally as we conceived. We started the conceptual plan, and then we decided this makes more sense. This just hasn't been taken and off. And how would you access that? The drive is here. So the drive... That's the issue. Oh. That's, the, that's issue. the issue. That the right. I understand that's issue. the issue. Yeah. This is not in the... In no, I understand the that. The drive that's then the is going to... Oh easy. Boy, going over there. So you're going to be going up... Mm -hmm. The wall is here that they blasted out, and you're going to the go in before. The wall is here. Four. Yes. Correct. We're going to go in. We're going to go into the toe of that. Moving up, up to the level that you plan on putting the. Correct. Building. This is going to go up at an eight percent grade. Okay. And it's about two hundred feet until it gets to here. And uh, you know we're not looking to build a large development here. We're not looking for huge disturbance. We want to keep everything minimized and we want to keep everything as natural as we can that's the intent of what we want to do here so if we were to entertain uh, uh, say what's a, a what's on the other side closer to the medical center a that what's right? on there's a stream, stream okay but I mean from Tatro Drive why can't you access the building from that side 
Then you go through wetlands. We don't, no, we don't have the property. We don't have the property to get up over here, and it's it's steep and it's too short of a distance to be able to get up here. And and where this lot line is, this lot line is the medical building. Okay. Off Petro. So our ability to get from here to here really doesn't exist. And if you were to create enough radius, you would end up over in here, which I. This is a very nice area, and I don't want to disturb anything up through here. As this goes up, this is just a, a small stream and a ravine through here, but as this gets past here, this is quite a nice area up in here. It's, it's a deep, rocky ravine that continues up. And it probably shows better on the other sofa. As that goes up through here, you can see how that would be here. It goes up through here, and it, and this is this is a very nice area. Would I can? That's why I was a little, you know, couldn't understand why that wasn't a more valuable area to you so even then. And but I know how these things yeah. occur. Well, <laughs> and I know that there was a lot that went on, and I think everything that went on around here was all about we need to build that shell station, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna mm. put the rest of it together and, so and do what we have to can do. Can you flip it over and? Suggest what, and I'm I'm not I'm just saying. Well, we would discussion. What would, we would your suggest? Um, giving you the whole back Th across this area right here, I think, is about you know just to make it a, s a simple line. We figured there's like 12 acres right here. Was there yeah. any wetland? Uh, and actually, <coughs> does that is that the uh, Georgianus? Does Georgianus abut any of that? Very steep. Very steep. Very, very steep. Very, there's, very a, there's a cell tower yeah. I think you're all aware of. Mm -hmm. The cell tower is about here. So our lot goes s significantly beyond the cell tower. Okay, now, and then let's see. And on this map, looking at this now, you're proposing to, the medical center is where? The medical the building left, is right here. There. We're proposing to construct the building we're talking about right here. So it's a little postage stamp. In Why don't you put it on the picture. front lot that you've got for sale? Because the front lots have better value right. for higher use. Right. So you were just showing that it's going to go right in the middle of the line. We're mm -hmm. going to we're going to get rid of this and we're going to consolidate this into one lot, and we're the owners and we're going to just have this as our own our own land. We don't we don't really anticipate doing no, anything. That's more in that area yeah. and you know the only thing we would like to do is just manage it for timber it's yeah. actually it's steep but it's 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 a nice piece of property and you know we do enjoy owning it and we would like to but we need a place for our construction office and we think that this is a is a nice location uh, we think it's going to be going to be reason it's going to be very appealing hmm? there's got to be a reason why well, I think it needs a site wall. I do too. I do too. I, I mean, I suggest that. In terms of any It's got to be I a site wall. Yeah. Yeah. I think what we know now, if, is there any other questions as to what they think they, you know, want? Because we'll end up, I think, taking a site walk and just seeing. Well, I think a site wall could really clarify a lot, but this mm. is, you yeah. know, the more I'm hearing, the more this is sounding like something to seriously consider. Right. right. They haven't been before planning yet. They came to you first. Right. Okay. Right. We don't want to. We don't want to move forward until we. Yeah. No, I. I think it does too. And and again, I think the original easement is not actually. It's so what yeah. that site is what it was when it was because of all the blasting and everything. So I think we need to look at the whole thing. Okay. I mean, it may not be that we find it is a valuable <coughs> yeah, thing that does that should be. And I think, so. you know, we're certainly willing to um, go on a site walk with you. But if you walk into this area, you'll see that the, the wet is still delineated. In fact, I think I've had it redelineated. Mm -hmm. So it's not an old delineation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's clear to what's, what's wet. And uh, to be honest with you, that's why we're here, because we're like, we don't understand where there's such high value in this piece. There was a gravel pit in there, too, wasn't there, on that piece of property there were mm. they had gone in I think they well on this small. side of short <laughs> on this side of Catro is what happened I know what happened here is you know, the soil conditions in this area right 
about here mm -hmm. very good mm -hmm. this this lot east of the shell station mm -hmm. is beautiful soil conditions that's what we we think that that has you know a, a good use there's no sense in putting a small professional office there when there's something better that can go mm -hmm. there so we don't want to use that lot but the soil conditions are very good so that is what they did good. is when they started in here they realized okay there's a lot of good gravels and they just started taking it whether that was with or without their approval or your approval or whoever's but when they got to here it got to be more glacial till exactly. and they just stopped mm -hmm. and they so that's why this front area <laughs> is n is not very pretty mm -hmm. I actually don't think that that originally was removed when the Tatro thing was put in. I think it was, it was actually done to. before that. Oh, it was prior yeah. to. Oh, yeah, prior that's because, because that. at some point somebody found that there was some good material yeah. there. Yeah, yeah but it, it was it wasn't the the Tatro drop. Another yet. thing that you can see that probably happened is back in the early days when these there were two <coughs> there was a rail tr um, rail bed and there was a trolley mm -hmm. bed that went along there. Probably when they built that, they mm -hmm. robbed material as they went along because yeah. you can see areas that the look like yeah. they mm -hmm. took them out here and you can just see by the topography, it looks like it was cut out. Well, I think we should have a sidewalk. Mm, I do too. For, and then to be honest, a uh, discussion will probably have to be at the next meeting mm -hmm. to go over what we found. Okay. But I think we're considering, you know, okay. we need to take a look at it. Fair enough. And see exactly what we have there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But no guarantees. I mean, you know, because there's never any right. guarantees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that is the only issue we have right well, now? Well, I you have another one. Yeah, too, there's don't you? another one out here, and I, I don't know Ooh. what I don't understand this one either. This is in the front. The trees the mm -hmm. so. that are yeah, that's here. Yes. No, this is. No, this is for the trees. Okay. So here we are at the corner of Pedro Drive and 114. <laughs> this is also a conservation mm -hmm. easement. Mm -hmm. so it's it on the other grass, side of the rail trail. It's a grass slope right mm -hmm. just below the I'm just trying the rail to trail. picture it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't have any effect on any development we'll ever do in this area because we'll we're divided by the rail trail. Yeah, is is that easy. in here too? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where is oh, it's, it's, there's no question in my mind That's that it's been dedicated as a conservation. No, I, I, and I just wanted to yeah. read what it. Who wrote these easements? <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> no, um, I assume that they were looked at by somebody. It was back when David was here. It was before Steve. Well, there's some issue then on just where the rail was. I think, I think it was they wanted to keep the trees. They wanted everything in front of the cell, shell station. They wanted to keep that. Remember, Evelyn? And then they a lost buffer. the rails and trails in front of it. Yeah, and they, 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 they gave up everything on that. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't understand if they were concerned about that in front of the shell station why the easement is on this side of the road the shell station is from here this way i think this and came no, because out of the planning board over here. I don't, this is not anything we would have the done. um remember that evelyn the shell station was going in and they were supposed to leave everything in front of it oh mm -hmm. and then yeah. it was supposed to look like a colonial home oh yes okay. oh yes that, mm -hmm. well i know there's been a lot of discussion in and we we kind of been uh victim of yeah <laughs> of what happened there. I'm sure. It's all prior to us. Well, that was then probably the big red flag for the planning board, and after that, I think it's very different. And they, they, okay. they did let a lot of things go because the rail trail it's does bad. not have any place to go from here to here. I the rail trail was supposed to, at the time it got to us, they were supposed to be traveling the railroad bed, right? Mm. Right. But then all of a sudden, the railroad bed went away. It, um, well, that's <laughs> they the put it in back. One of the funny things about this whole corridor along here, and this is prior to us as well, is the town <coughs> owns the, the rail to trail mm -hmm. and sewer easement. They own the property. Mm -hmm. So it separates all of these lots by your land, mm -hmm. by the town's land. Mm -hmm. But from here to here, we own it, the shell owns it, and we own it. Mm -hmm. And it's only an easement. I know. Yeah. That's because of the way the B&M sold, mm -hmm. sold it to 
uh, and had negotiated easements back in the 1800s, the late 1800s, early 1900s, because that when we were doing the rail trail and trying to get the land, some was fee simple, some reverted back to the landowners, some was... Uh, it, was it was how they made individual deals as they went along? Oh, yeah. Everything, yeah. Because... <coughs> From what I understand from the person I bought this property from, <coughs> is that when he originally bought this, B and M still owned this, yeah. and he he took them to court to because he couldn't even uh, they couldn't even get a cross easement, cross it. they mm -hmm. wouldn't even allow him to right. cross it. They couldn't cross so it. So I don't know, they you know. So he made the case that they were, you know, keeping his land landlocked, and so he eventually took them to court, and he, as he said it, they settled on the courthouse stairs the, the day of the... I remember, because we used to live on the railroad yeah. track, and there was they were then yeah. trying to make... And some some people along the way were buying parts of mm -hmm. it, and others... Yeah, it was, yeah because uh, if, right. if this was it's owned by the town, stuff. I would have never bought this property, because that would have set all the setbacks back. That would have made good, very limited tonnage mm -hmm. yeah. use of the land, which is... Which is the problem with the lot next to us, mm -hmm. the lot down further that's got a new real estate sign on it just this side of Magoo's. Mm -hmm. They're all mm -hmm. separated by land that's owned by the town, which then affects your setback. Mm -hmm. Because your setback is now from the back side of the easement versus mm -hmm. being from the right of way. But we don't have that case, and, and you people understand more about how that got there than we do. Mm -hmm. I guess. And he and it's what Karen made the case of. It sounds yeah. because of individual. Deals. What we're saying is we'll throw that site in to look at it too. Yeah, because <laughs> I think you know this one is nothing more than a grass slope because it's it's directly adjacent to the sewer easement, so this is grass. It's not it's not even based on what I can see here. It's not even the lowest point where the drainage ditch is. So. Well, this, this occurred I before I was on the I think you can so I don't know. I, I don't think this, this came from us. I think I this think is probably the planning it. board that had. They, uh, developers had to give. They may have offered it. The, the the developers had to give plans. Yeah. And that's probably what they gave us. So this is not the sort of thing that we would ask for. So <laughs> so might be yeah, wise to re look at have rewritten the way it predates the came from even. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, you think this this particular. This is 2000. Predates to. Allison paper. Properties LLC. Mm -hmm. Calvin Properties is the prior no, owner. That's who we bought from. I think but this goes back only to about mm -hmm. 2000 when this was done. What, does it have a date of when this easement was established? Yeah, yeah it's 2003. 2003. Okay, so that's the original Part subdivision. Of but wait a minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was done in the original subdivision. Yeah. It's when it was recorded for it. Yeah, but I don't think, uh, I remember our going in and walking and talking oh. about protecting, I mean, the, all the, the subdivision uh, water was that's coming yeah. down, but. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was recorded in yeah. 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 Well, whatever. So this, this okay. easement yeah. was created at the resubdivision because the resubdivision date is 2002. This, this subdivision is older than that. The original right. subdivision, I don't know when it. Yeah. Well, the date is 10th of June, 2003. The plan, I think, that we looked at was signed in 2003, too, which is called the resubdivision. resubdivision. It just been, it took right. them a while to do it yeah. from when it got approved. Yeah, I understand that. I just, I'm just stating that this whole subdivision, I guess, must have started <coughs> in the 90s or something, and then they resubdivided. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think we need to do a site walk. I think we'll leave it at that. People, mm -hmm. everyone, sure. Okay, finish. Okay, I think Maureen is going to have to sit down because someone wants to meet. David's going to meet with everyone. If the weekend, I can't do these things. Yeah, if, if there's four of you, then yeah, it constitutes a meeting. So oh, someone has to take just I don't have to summary go. notes. I don't have to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we ought to be doing anyhow. You just take summary notes, summary and that's yeah, it. Anyways, and yeah. Give them to me, and I'll take them. Well, you have to take notes anyway. Anyways, Once yeah, you've done your site walk, we all get together at the end and then just, you know, say what we've Ten years later, we don't remember a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying that you won't have an official site walk? You'll do it on your own time? 
Is that what you're saying? Or? No, no, we'll, we'll just go together. The, just do you know when you want it's more the mechanics members are of it. there, then it becomes an official meeting yeah. and has to be posted and oh, all that. But I can post it. Can post it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when are you gonna? It's when are we gonna have it? Yeah. Do you want to walk with them? Yes, I would like to meeting. like to show them. Hmm? We can take them. <coughs> well, boy, That's we're not going to be able to discuss this until the next meeting. Anyways. Anyway. Right. So. Matt, to be honest, uh, I now yes. you're working, but I, at the end of, and you probably work too. He does. You think he does? Well, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, anyway, I'm. With enough notice, mm -hmm. though, I can. With enough notice, you don't. I can send I'm just. So you don't want to do it a Saturday or a Sunday? I plan it more so. I, I couldn't do it this, this Saturday, but um, I have to do that. I don't know how this. You know what? Let's get together after we just figured out, and then let you know. Okay. okay. The days are still long, anyways. If you want to do it in the evening. Well, that's true. I guess. We'll do it till. So this is. I'm gonna lose interest. The twenty fourth. Our next meeting is um, like the 28th of August. Yeah. I think before. Mm -hmm. I think right. so. Um, it's late. Yeah. Waiting for Saturday, October 6th. What's the preference of the rest of you? Would you like to ask? Just name a date and I'll tell you if I'm around because mm. August is getting busier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. David, is there preference after work or a weekend? Okay, the weekend, not the like to me, it is so long that it's weekends before or after just doesn't work well. 17th? 18th? Is it open now? I'm sure. Mm -hmm. The 17th or 18th? 17th is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. 18th, any, Why is how does that sound? Either of those. Those Saturday, are you think? Saturday, Sunday? I can't do either of those days. Um, but that's all right. Go, oh, you want to just wait until I can. When if you want to. Well, I don't think all of you end up being able to go mm -hmm. on the same no, time anyway. It's just you gotta. Well, I, I mean, you can drive to the end of Tatro Drive, and that'd be different. Right. Just add it. So what do you want to do? Is it easier for somebody who after work? What's Amy? Is that easier or worse? Seventeenth now. Um, I it know depends. Dan, on if the it day, has to be on a weekend, it has to be here. If the huh? three of you are there on the week, but if it has to be a weekend, I know. Okay. Well, there's three or four, though, isn't there? Hmm? Yeah, I mean, that's three it. We don't have to have everybody there. Or, like, today. Because Saturday. we're going to bring it back and yeah, talk. And so, really, all we're doing is we're the seven. eyes that are just to take a look at it, and then we're bringing it back here to discuss it. Who would like to go? Yeah. All right. Are you, when are you talking about? That's your. I'll go if you. Yeah. If you want to do it after. Well, you know what? Then we don't have any weekends. We could do it on. Right. Anytime. Well, I can pretty much do it anytime except Tuesday and Thursday. Anytime uh, Tuesday and Thursday. This Friday evening. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> anytime. How about way after that? Um, yeah. Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. Friday evening or afternoon? It's afternoon would be I guess, but not evening. What are we talking about? An hour or two? You're getting more complicated than the yeah. Yeah. Saturday. Yeah, I know. I, well, those area, pick a day where majority can go, and no, those that can, if they can go visit on their own. But that's a long. It's that's not a lot. Not long at all. <laughs> no. Okay. What about? If they go to the back thing? lot with their bike. Yeah. That's right. We just, but you can actually drive all the way up to the south. Going uh, back to the 17 and that. Uh, uh, that week. Are you available? Pick a day in that week of the 17th of or August. Or the 18th. Yeah, that next week, anytime. That or what day in that week? I don't care. I suggest At you do it an hour early? before your next scheduled meeting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good idea. Thank you. Because we don't want to wait that long. <laughs> so you can't do during the week? No, I've already just, but I'm, not, I'm clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the problem is, is I mean, because you look at a lot of the open space, I thought it would be beneficial if you went. just a constant. So let's just why tomorrow don't morning. Is anybody available tomorrow morning? No. No. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right, I'm picking one on your calendar. Tomorrow morning is. Tomorrow's a Thursday. The 25th. What about the 27th? 
Oh, that's this Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. All right. We're, we're going backwards now. Yeah. Oh. If you want to go to August. Can you tell us? What about the 10th? Can you tell us what's going on? Okay. August 10th. It's a couple of days. She's going to bring it up right away. Right. Sorry. I have a family that's coming in for he from Houston. But you guys could do it on the 17th? I yes. think I could do it, you know, or sometime around after the 17th. Okay. Let's just say sometime after the 17th. Okay. And then we'll let everybody know. Okay. And maybe we'll Fair try enough. to fit it in either that weekend or sometime during that week. Fine. So they would like to accompany us. So right, I'd like that's a what I'm we let, We'll let you know and we can post We would them. prefer during the week, but if that doesn't work, we'll accommodate you. Okay. Fine for me. The only one that can't do it during the week is David. Man, I don't have to be there. For you don't have to Why be there. Why do you keep okay. looking at me? And, and, <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So we'll just wait to hear from you. Okay. We'll try to... Okay, thank you for your time. Yeah, but after the 17th, then. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Now, before the next meeting. Before right. the next meeting. Jean, are you just going to email everybody and um, say... Uh, we'll let Patty know and she'll... Yeah, you two decide, tell me the date, and I'll email everyone. And then okay. if you can't go, he says you can drive up to the tower. Right. So you can... Oh, yeah. Them. No, I, I don't think... Actually, it's not going to be a long thing at all. It's a no. problem in. We just want okay. to... Okay, finance. Vacation and Karen. kids and grandkids. Finances. Stuff like that. Aaron? Yes. Finance. The money is. The, our, our finance director now is doing a beautiful job. Yes. Very good. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Uh, minutes. I like that one. <coughs> minutes from June 26th. Do um, we have a motion on that? I make a motion to approve the minutes of June 26th, 2013. Second. No second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I wasn't here. So I wasn't here. here so I'm extension. <laughs> what about the non-public? Do you include the non-public? And and when we get the extension from them. Um, and, and now non-public for June 26th. I make the motion to approve this. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have three abstentions. Okay, now we have a correspondence. <laughs> we have some uh, notices of finding letters from the New Hampshire DES to Scott and Tracy Landry regarding wetland violations <coughs> and regarding a building, a patio gazebo wharf and retaining wall without wetland permits match 21 lot 8366 Cove Street. And I believe everyone had that in their packet. I believe it was just sent to us with the state. Yeah, I sent you everything. The state's doing very well at Finding notifying any. them all of the violations. Okay. We have um, a notice of violation letter from DES for Eric Fletcher um, regarding shoreline violation of constructing of a rock table within the Caswell River. Glen Lake property is located on 130 Elm Street, Max 35, Lot 17A. And most of these, you have the, the most of you have the letters from those. Yeah, I sent them to everybody. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, then a letter of the Frank Lee from the Stan oh, for Stan. <coughs> Cameron, we, we we struggle with this one. Uh, let's see. Regarding the shoreline violation for accessory a chicken coop mm -hmm. and resurfacing the shoreline with astroturf without a permit. Property is located at 85 Surrett Road, Max 24, Lot 71. And I, when we, they may have gotten their second notice on that one. Um, I know that they're, you've talked to them, trying to help them, and they're talking with the state directly on how to rectify it. And you have the pictures of that? Mm -hmm. That was all that was sent to the state for the violation. I don't see how we can really help them with that very much. The, with the AstroTurf, as far as the state said, they had to remove it. And now I think they have to have a soil scientist. Yeah, they're working with the state. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We tried. Um, there's a copy of Catherine McDonald regarding wetland violation for installing a dock in Glen Lake without a permit. And the property is loaded at 218 Elm Street, Map 36, Map Lot 14. I think that was a big dock, too, wasn't it? Hmm. 
And this is copy of complaint and notice of violation letter from New Hampshire DES to Tuskwell and Amy Kimes regarding alterations of size of the stream bank on 34 Smith Road, map 7, lot 11A. Copy of letters from the New Hampshire DES regarding shoreline violation for constant constructing of a gazebo deck and dock without a permit sent to Alden and Elaine Miller. 53 Shirley Park Road, hmm. map 36, lot 1. And a copy from New Hampshire DES letter was sent to David Walton. Demolition state deemed the tree cutting exception to Black Book. Black Book was done in <coughs> accordance with requirements of the RSA 483-B, New Hampshire Shoreline Water Quality Protection. Someone did it right. He did it right. <laughs> and that is yeah, there was no violation. No violation. It was done right. Oh, good. Because we had gotten a letter of for violation, okay. but it was correct. Right. Mm -hmm. There is a timber cut too in here for um, Shanty Road. Shanty Road. Oh. That came in too just now. Where? Um, and then Swanson Family Trust Shanty Road. Shanty. How are they getting in and out? Map twelve. Um, Swanson. It's a timber cut permit. The timbering on off of Shan Shanty Road on Map 12, Lot 2. Right. Shanty, I... Near you. Yep. It, yes. And Shanty Road is currently a disaster because of another neighbor on it running big trucks on it. Mm. And it's eroded something fierce. And I'm just wondering so you say how... Is it a dirt road? Or yes. Uh -huh. I, it's a class six. Oh, class six. six. And I'm just wondering how he's go if if he's upgrading it or what's happening with it. I think he's just accessing the property off of that's the other one that came in. off of the came in. It's just this is a timber cut that comes in. I can express that you have concerns with um, impacts to the roads. Um, this is just the standard thing that I get from assessing. Right. It shows now, a lot. The town doesn't maintain a class no, six no, road. No. So still who, access has the who has jurisdiction over that then? The town still? Mm -hmm. So if it is being <coughs> rutted badly or eroding away, then the town can then have a cease and desist in terms of using it? Is that right? I don't no. know. What no, they've it? never done anything. That's what I'm just wondering. No. So it's basically proceed at your own risk. Doing any work to it, then we would have to, you know. So if they're just using it to access to do logging. I'm, yeah, but I'm just wondering how they're going to get trucks down there, or are they using a, a staging area, or, or what? I'm. The concern. The concern. Who's doing the cut? Um. Someone's been doing it. Charles Rose. I believe. If that's the sign. The logger is Charles Rose. 100 Chase Farm Road, Webster. Hmm. And it's the Swanson Family Trust that owns the property. Right. And I wonder when they're, when is the start date? Start date. Okay, so I'm just looking for the year. Um, oh, dear. I don't see a start date. Came in on seven nine. Yeah, July 9th it came in. Well, we have one. We have one more here. The Charles Rose from Webster. Yep. Mm -hmm. Rose R O S E. Yeah. And no start date. Well, you can look at I don't see a start date oh. on it. Usually they, they have X amount of time to approve it. and then Right. But they usually put a start date and a finish date. Yeah. If it's on there, I don't see where it is. I don't see it either. Can we move on? Okay, I'll let you look at that, Cameron. Um, Thank you. Gerald Hebert Revocable Trust, 118 Mountain Base Road. Do you want me to kind of explain? 
Yeah, is this the chicken coop? Eight, eight this ten. is chicken coop that's I'm like sure on the up. dam or near the dam, and the oh. residents up on Mountain Base Pond have been complaining about the ducks and the chickens being fed along the beach area, and they have concerns. Oh, look at this. Mm. Yeah, you can see with that. It. And it's um, because it's a shoreland. This is different than the other one with the Yeah, it's turf. different, okay. and it's. This Brian is went one. out and looked at it because we've got a lot of complaints about it. Because okay. people that are swimming there are concerned with it. Well, are the, is it a chicken coop that is okay, at, it's a chicken do the chickens coop. have access to the water area? Yeah, yeah, and there's ducks, too. Yeah. I'll show you in a minute. It, it, wow. It's a chicken coop and shed, and it's been recently installed on the property. A structure is built um, within the 100-foot setback. Mm. It's Mountain Base Pond, the brook that flows out. Both Mountain Base Pond and the brook that flow out of the dam outlet are considered surface water. Mm -hmm. And they sent pictures. So Animals shouldn't be going down to the water edge there. Animals they shouldn't, shouldn't be on no. this right here. This is the one that really shows us the next one. I mean, that's right on the water. What body of water is it? <coughs> it's Mountain Base Mountain Pond. Base. Pond. Okay. Mountain Base. That's near where everyone was swimming at. It's the like swimming near the swi swimming area. Up, up. Oh, geez. As yeah. far as public swimming there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. that shouldn't. They yeah. should. Yeah, then hide E. coli. Too. Right, no kidding. Yeah, it just shouldn't be allowed. Um, and it's the people that live there have been calling. Oh, geez. Well, so, uh, so is this, have to do has this been, have they Brian been started code enforcement okay. and he copied the state as well. Okay. So that's that's uh, he just gave you a copy so you're aware that All he's right. taking action on the issue. It should okay. be, yes. Mm -hmm. So there, the, the owner's been notified? Or yeah, something. they oh. just got notified this week. That's why you didn't get it in your packet. Okay. This is the and then the only other thing is oh. the plan that's before you just came in too. Um, they're going, I brought it because they're going for the August 11th meeting before planning. It's a three lot is subdivision. I'm sorry. Off of Patty Hill Road. Back here and the chickens and then the uh -huh. over this one here. Okay. Okay, so this is a three <coughs> lot subdivision on Patty Hill. Yep. Wow, if they have a fence around uh, this, they'll 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 they'll
the 100 foot wetland setback. So they really don't have a place for yards or, I mean, kind of a little, little garden or anything. You want him to come into um, a meeting too? Yeah. You can request Why that. Why don't we request they come to the next meeting? I guess so. Yeah, we can't and do I anything about the existing house. You no. no. Yeah. So I can wow. um, pass that there's, the conservation has concerns because there's a lot of Small wetlands wet. and you ask the applicant oh, yeah. to come into the next meeting. Yes. And then after that meeting, you'll provide further comments to the planning board. <coughs> Because mm -hmm. they can always continue it to allow time yeah. for. You know, is there another subdivision that you, you said they came in before? Uh, and you want to site walk the property as well? Okay. What is surrounding this? Karen, you know? Uh, Martin Farm Road. Um, you know where that is? Uh, up, going up near Clark? Uh, Going you know, up Route 13. Right there, isn't it? Yeah. 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 The, the road that goes to into his house. Jim Clark's house. house. This is it's the just scenic byway section. Yeah. yeah. So this is just on the other side. Yeah, it's in yeah. the yeah. pass the Clark property on the right hand side. Really now, north. is this, was that supposed to be not developed? Is that what you're saying? Or? No, we're just saying where it is. Okay. Where it is. Okay. Almost on the Dunbarton line. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks yeah. like it. They do yeah. about Dunbarton. Right yeah, on the bar yeah. They have a butters in Dunbarton. Hmm. So we'll ask them to come into the next meeting. I'll ask okay. them for the next meeting and I'll pass the comments on. So we'll have those for the August mm -hmm. 11th meeting that you want a presentation and you want to site walk the property. And I'll also ask Don to. Uh, Um, any, any and I probably, sh I'm going to have to contact you to see a date because I'm sure he'll try and uh, get you guys to do it before the meeting. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. We're going to block out eight hours to set that date. But you can all, you know, if it can't happen, <laughs> that way you can talk about it on the meeting on the 28th of August if, if you decide to walk it before. Oh, yeah. Okay, anything else? Okay. Anyone else? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We've adjourned. <laughs> Our poor TV guy. Is that it now? Very frustrated with us. <laughs>